Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and here I am returning to Ultimate General Civil War uh, for episode 17 in this uh, live stream Let's Play that I've uh, uh, been doing for the last month plus. In our last episode, well, it was kind of a touch base on the channel, it was only a short episode, and it was sort of me readying my forces for the next major fight that we're going to see. And the next battle that we are going to fight is going to be the Battle of Cedar Mountain. Now, historically, the Battle of Cedar Mountain was a engagement that took place before the Second Battle of Bull Run and was a fight where General Stonewall Jackson engaged, I believe it was General Banks, Commissar Banks, uh, as the Confederate left uh, swung around the Union Army to its flank and forced Pope to withdraw further north. Pope's flank. Uh, Cedar Mountain's interesting, though, because it's one of those rare times where Stonewall Jackson actually was caught off guard by the Union. A initial Union attack after both sides were kind of dueling with artillery and, and the Confederates didn't really think the Union were going to do much. A sharp attack by, I believe it was Williams' division, uh, hit the Confederate flank, crumpled it up, and General Jubal Early had to hold on to save the day until General A.P. Hill's reinforcements could arrive. That's what my recollection of the fight is anyway. I played it a few times in Take Command 2nd Manassas, which handles the battle very well. Uh, but that's all first-hand memory, so I could be wrong there. But but anyway, that's my recollection of the Battle of Cedar Mountain. Now, the game here doesn't really reflect Cedar Mountain at all. You don't have a surprise Union flank attack or anything like that. It's one of the minor side battles that you can fight in the game, uh, not including the, the seven, to however many, you know, authentically modeled uh, historical battles. So even though it's a historical engagement, it doesn't really represent represent history. But that's enough of me rambling, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump back in to Ultimate General Civil War. We're going to go ahead and fight the Battle of Cedar Mountain. And this was taken from a live stream, as I've already said in the past. So why don't we go ahead and jump back into the live stream's audio. Sorry about that. Jump back into the live stream's audio and hope you guys go from there and enjoy. I'm from Wisconsin. Um, my two favorite generals of the war are probably Winfield Scott Hancock. Well, three favorite generals would be Winfield Scott, Hancock, John Gibbons, just because of the Iron Brigade and its ties to Wisconsin, and then uh, James Longstreet. Um, those would be kind of my three favorite, I think. Um, I, I'm i playing as the Confederates because I lost really badly as the Union. <laughs> um, as far as... Um, yeah, as far... What was I going to say? As far as histories, I would say I would say Shelby Foot, but when um, when discussing Shelby Foot, you need to recognize that uh, some of what he's saying is certainly dated, and I don't think that uh, he he doesn't directly push the lost cause theory um, as much as maybe some claim, but I don't think he was as what's the best way of saying it. He's not the most objective source. He is the best Civil War writer. By miles, the guy's writing is poetry in terms of history. He engages you and captures you. I'm actually in the process of listening to uh, his books on tape via Audible uh, as I drive back and forth to work. I got like a two-hour commute every day, one hour each way. And the writing, and I've read it before in person. I read him in high school just for the heck of it. I saw these books on the shelf. I was like, "Hey, mom, what's that?" And she's like, "Oh, these are my books." You know, she was big on history, and I ended up reading them on a summer vacation, like 3,000 pages of history. They are the best. Civil War history, not from necessarily a purely accurate standpoint. They're not inaccurate, but kind of the author's biases. Um, however, they are just the best written. Like I said, they're like poetry. It's like the John Gibbon of uh, of the American Civil War. So when you when you think of the you know, the Roman Empire, one of the best nonfiction books ever written is the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by John Gibbon. His thesis is fundamentally flawed. The Roman Empire was not collapsing for 2,000 years from before Rome fell all the way to Byzantium. It wasn't this constant decline once the you know the empire converted to Christianity. Um, so his thesis, his argument is flawed, but the history and the writing is phenomenal. And I think Foote would fall into a similar similar premise. Oh yeah, Edward Gibbon. Did I say John Gibbon? Sorry. 
I have not listened to the Civil War podcast. Link it in here, and I'll check it out. I didn't. I'm not aware of one. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get back into the game. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fight the Battle of Cedar Mountain. It seems that the Federals are not planning to attack soon. However, the presence at the peninsula, uh, their presence at peninsula. Their presence at Peninsula is a real threat for our capital. Okay. Anyway, we need to develop a bold strategy and strike the enemy supply lines around Manassas. The Federals would be pressed to respond by relocating forces from the Peninsula and loosen the pressure to Richmond. Advance rapidly to the north and around the right of the Union Army and cut the Orange and Alexandria Railroad by breaking the supply line. Okay. Um, looks like we're going to be outnumbered and the enemy has a lot of artillery pieces. Um... We don't get a ton of money, so we can't take too many casualties. The Yankees have been alerted to our presence and sent a force to halt our advance. Oh, damn. They've occupied the ridge above Cedar Run. You have no choice but to attack and repulse them. Good luck, General. Good luck indeed. That is a defensive position. Look at this. You've almost got a concave defensive position with a tree line at the top of a frickin' hill. Oh, that's going to be a nightmare to assault. See, there's some roads. This road's probably going to put us in, in enfil out of their position. We can try and go up this roadway and hope they don't have anything on the left and right, and then we can swing around on the objective. A frontal attack would be suicide. So I think what we'll do is we will advance our troops up this road, and then we'll swing right to try and flank and crush them. Is this Cedar Mountain? Cedar Mountain? I thought the Federals attacked the Confederates. Um, I don't know what to do with my artillery here. If there's enemy here, I'm going to use this artillery forward to try and suppress them. We must suppress John Pope. The irascible John Pope must be suppressed. Okay. Are we going uphill? This looks awfully... Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it is a federal... It is a federal attack in rea real life. The irascible John Pope. Get it right. Drinking some fine single malt scotch. The Balvini. Caribbean cask, 14 years. Extra matured in rum casks. Um, it would be better with a cigar, but it would also seem more fitting for the Civil War. Um, we got about three hours. Put these guys in these woods. Put these guys in these woods. Advance straight. Advance here. Put this brigade in re the rear and reserve. I'm going to deploy some skirmishers. I don't like splitting my brigades, but I found that skirmishers are incredibly useful in this game. It's a way to scout without risking too much in the way of casualties. Actually, let's... Oh shit, didn't want to run them. Let's put some skirmishers in this in this tree line as well. Maybe to get some eyes on the enemy. Uh, or at the very least, pin them in their positions. So you can see here, lots of... Well, I could hear federal artillery. We're going to move this artillery of ours forward. Okay, so... Enemy skirmishers here, as well as regular infantry. 
They're definitely deployed in this ridge line here. So we're going to have to try and go up and over around their flank. Push up this way, this way, use these woods to our advantage. Keep these guys back until I know a little bit better what I'm doing. And again, I'm going to try and move up and around their flank. Try and have our artillery kind of close in and firing into their flank. These skirmishers are very useful, both as scouts and as well as getting around the enemy flank. So highly recommend using lots and lots of skirmishers. Actually, since these guys are here, why don't we go ahead and attach them back because they're right in line with, with their troops. Looks like there's some enemy horsemen around too. And once Carol pulls back, as he should, because frankly he's sort of flanked. Do I hear melee? Oh, these guys are charging across the across the way. That's interesting. Okay, these guns are coming up. We're going to move these guys around here. We're going to really try for a wide flanking maneuver. I can't believe an hour is already gone. Hope this is a multi-phase battle. There you go. Carol's withdrawing. Need more time. Wow, these guys really did pull out. I'm gonna kind of try and pin them. We're gonna move Stonewall forward a bit. I know I'm not the most engaging or chat-worthy uh, streamer, guys, so I apologize for that. Um, I certainly could be a better host. Trying, I know I've been criti I was criticized in my original Ultimate General series for, you know, I did a great job narrating, but I did a horrible job in kind of, not setting the tone, but a horrible job in kind of making sure I was playing well while I was narrating. Alright, where's our supply wagon? Let's get him over here. Heartstuff's kind of exposed himself in the open. There you go. Okay. What are our um, victory conditions again? Inflict at least 5% more on the us? Okay, so if we just inflict more casualties on them, then we get a draw. So, it's worth considering. I don't want to take a ton of casualties if I don't have to. We don't get a lot of money. So I'd rather not lose too much. I think we still lose a bit of prestige, though, with a draw, so it's not ideal. I don't want to advance across the open, but... 
I'm kind of moving my artillery more forward than I usually do. Puts it at some risk, but definitely may allow us to use it more efficiently. So we'll see how that pans out. We do have some cover here on the far left. So the huge casualties are going to come here on our left. If they come. Everything looks like it's committed here. Well, that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm running guns up, not up their face per se, but definitely running a lot of guns toward them. You can see it looks like they've refused their lines a bit to guard this ridge. So I'm trying to use these woods to our advantage as much as we can. It's a lot of troops crammed in a pretty narrow space. Interesting. Got quite a few of them pulling back. Skirmishers. Let's say we're doing an okay job so far, folks. Their guns are pulling back. Excellent. Again, trying to use this wood line to our advantage. Seems to be working so far. As long as Stonewall can hold on the right. How's our artillery doing anyway? Not a ton. But that may also be because they've been maneuvering so much. These guys are point blank range. Just finish them. There you go. Reload quickly now. And finish them off. One last volley might finish off Hall's battery. I'm hoping. There you go. It did. You finished the finished the job there. Alright, let's bring the canister up now. Or let's let's bring the artillery up now. On the, I wish we could double quick artillery. That would sure be nice. These guys in the open are going to lose a lot. A lot more than I'd like. Hopefully the Federals don't stand and fight for too long. Yikes, the Orphan Brigade. K-1 
Okay. I don't know if any of these are in canister range or not. Doesn't sound like it. Gonna try and flank him a bit. Just need a little bit more time. I really like Kearney, actually. The more I found out about... The more I learn about Kearney, the, the Union General, the more I like him. Guy was... I mean... The, uh... The cliché is he was the soldier's soldier, right? Are these the Napoleons? Yeah, they are. Okay. Do your worst. You're firing right into this federal unit's flank, right? Well, not the flank anymore. Oh boy. Green's trying to flank the Stonewall Brigade. I think we're in decent enough shape to prevent that. We'll see. This is an interesting, interesting battle. Casualties are okay, I think. If we look at it, definitely inflicted more on them. Tom Preston is killed. That sucks. He's a major general. Oh boy. Get in from the woods. We're gonna get obliterated in there. Our right is actually in serious danger with these two units here. Ah! Damn blue bellies, they're making this a bit tougher fight than I wanted. God damn it. These two brigades here on the flank are really killing me. It's a pretty intense melee. Use these skirmishers back here. They found a very defensible position. Lugan's best. Lost a few guns, I think.
One thing that is really annoying with this game, it doesn't give enough credit to a charge on an artillery battery. If infantry close to melee with a battery and they have no rounds in the chamber, they should be overrun or abandon the guns or whatever. Not trying to melee these guys all to death, they just keep getting in melees. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to do enough damage to artillery. Oh, these guys are flanked. Anyway, it looks like we will win this battle, losing way more men than I had wanted, and probably more than I'm able to effectively replace with the meager 60,000 bonus we get for winning. What I don't understand is this goes to zero and now it says contested, so what's the point of that? Anyway, victory, we lost 4,200 infantry, okay, not quite as many as I thought. Uh, looks like we lost three guns, that's costly. And we lost 45 guns. See, here's what I don't get. If they lose that many... Holy shit, we captured 18 Napoleons. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's nice. Um, okay, sorry about my uh, excited excitement. Preston's dead. Nelson's wounded. And several guys get promoted. Um, overall, 4,200 casualties on our end, 65 on theirs. There you go. The War Services Medal. One career point, plus four reputation, 65,000. So our reputation is... Fame is growing. We could use this to get some weapons, but I don't like... I like seeing my prestige go up, right? That's the objective. Um, I think I'm going to do medicine, because again, we keep losing all these casualties. If we can get casualties healed, that will be very helpful. So I'm going to go with the career point to medicine. Um, our victory list is growing. Um, let's see here. Two generals are wounded. Let's go back to the army. So Bartow's widows lose their commander. It's fitting. Um, we could go with historical commanders, but that's a lot of money. Or we could go with junior commanders. We're going to go with junior commanders. Um... Let's see here. Alright, well we had 1,500 at that last battle. So if we go up to 1,500 again here. Alright folks, well that's going to do it for this uh, video of Ultimate General Civil War. You can see here we just fought the battle of Cedar Mountain and... Uh, we're successful, we were able to win the battle, although we lost a lot more in the, in the way of men than I had hoped to lose. Nonetheless, the result was a victory for the Confederacy, and moving forward in the Second Manassas Campaign, as I attempt to rebuild my forces using mostly veterans, which I think will end up being somewhat of a mistake, uh, most likely anyway, but I guess we'll see. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, we will continue the series in the future, probably in two days' time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the section below. If there's anything you'd like to see, please feel free. Uh, but with that being said, again, hope you guys all enjoyed. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out. Oh god, that was creepy. Alright, bye bye now!